Today, I'm taking Bud Light and turning it into a mead. Let's get started. So we're literally taking a Bud Light recipe and we're turning it into a mead. Now specifically, we're turning it into what we call a braggot, which is a hybrid between a beer and a mead combo. We're not getting rid of all the grains, the beer portion of this. Uh, we're adding honey. So we're kind of doing something weird here. We're, we're making it into a, a hybrid mead, but still a mead nonetheless, classified as a mead. This all started with a silly idea that I had about three months ago. I wasn't drinking a Bud Light at the time, but I was drinking a beer and I was like, you know, it'd be interesting to take in, uh, a Bud Light recipe, which someone has undoubtedly created, and try and turn it to a mead by adding some honey. So what I did was I got on online and I looked up to find somebody who had done a Bud Light clone. So I have the Bud Light clone recipe here from the guys from Brewer's Friends, Brewer's Friend, excuse me. And uh, I, I started with this base recipe right here. Essentially what I did was I took the ideas that this had and then I took it up to my local Learn to Brew shop, which you'll see them here in a second featured. And I, I took it to my friend Liberty up there and I said, hey, I wanna make this Bud Light clone, but I wanna pull back the amount of grain that's there and add some honey so we can make it into a mead or a braggot specifically. So what he basically did was he plugged in into their system some numbers and we figured out and got to this recipe right here, which is the one we brewed today. Now beer people are gonna follow and understand. Mead people, you might not know as much about beer brewing, but essentially there's a mash step and then you have your hops um, portion. And so we had some extra elements. You know, I'm not, not trying to talk down to mead people. Um, it's just a different thing. It's a, I've had to learn a lot about this whole process. Anyways, so we have this recipe right here. We have uh, two pounds, 13 ounces of distilling malt, two pounds, 13 ounces of honey, 15.2 ounces of uh, rice flaked, flaked, flaked rice, and 3.9 ounces of carapils. Our hops were Columbus, and we had 60 minutes of 0.1 ounce which is like nothing, literally like two or three hot pellets, and then 15 minutes of 0.2 ounces of tomahawk, Columbus tomahawk. And we used the saf lager yeast um, that we had there, I believe it was, or the Omega, one of those lager yeast, Pilsen lager yeast, I think. So we took our recipe, we got our grains, and we went through the process of heating up our water, our, our mash water, up to, this specifically said, to uh, 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So I did that in my system I have. It was about five gallons or so of uh, water, heating up to about, or probably six gallons, up to 149. We then took our grains that we had already gotten and everything, and we put them into there. We mashed for a total of an hour. We then pulled those grains out because the mash was done and we put some sparge water on them so that they would clear off the rest of the sugars from the grains. At that point, we were ready to go ahead and get it to a boil. So that's what we did. We brought it to a boil. We added our 0.1 ounce of Columbus hops for 60 minutes. And then at the 15 minute left mark of that 60 minutes, we added 0.2 ounces. So this hop profile is really, really light. We chilled it down with our wort chiller and pitched our yeast. We put it into specifically my, my fridge over here that I use for lagering things. And it fermented uh, pretty low. Fermentation temperatures were basically uh, 48.2 for the first four days. We rose up to 55.4 for one day. We then went to 62.6 for one day and 66.2 for another day and 41 for a cold crash. We let it uh, have a diacetyl rest, go through the diacetyl rest process, let the yeast really clean up um, that diacetyl character because that's what yeast do essentially is after they're done, hopefully they take all of that that they put out there and they go zoop, bring it back in and it's gone, hopefully. That was a process of about three weeks for the fermentation. Now, I know that's for you, that was literally like moments, but for me, it was three weeks. After that, we threw it into a keg. Um, oh, I forgot to say, I meant very important. When I added my honey, because there was honey in this, the honey went in after the mash 
and after the hops, after we had boiled and we started to cool it down, we added the honey in. So the, the honey did not go into the mash profile because we would have lost a lot of the nice characters from it here. And I believe I used orange blossom honey. Beer went to a keg, force carbonated it, stuck it in the fridge for it to carbonate up and we're gonna do two things today. First of all, you're gonna see a better tasting done by the wonderful guys at Learn to Brew, which is the local brew shop here in Edmond. And they are super nice, super helpful. I'll put their information below where you can support them and, and actually buy online. It's a nice way, nice thing you can do. They ship all the time too. And they're local, so I, I appreciate them. They did a tasting of this for me. But first, let's go ahead and do a side-by-side. -side. Let me get a pour and then we'll taste it with this. Here is mine. Here's the Bud Light Braggot or Mead. And of course we want to compare this to a true Bud Light. And I, no shame. I don't really buy Bud Light, so I didn't go buy a 24 pack. I just went to the gas station and bought this, which is the smallest amount of Bud Light you can buy at a gas station. Fun fact. Okay, carbonation wise. Oh, they, they are much more clear than me. They got their science down. Beautifully clear, not so clear. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, carbonation is very good on both of them. Let's, let's remind ourselves of what, it's not the first time I've had Bud Light, by the way, but let's remind ourselves of what Bud Light tastes like. I mean, Bud Light's really not a terrible beer. It's very much so, a, I don't know, it's, it's okay. Not the worst. I mean, it's got a decent multi profile there. Obviously we don't have any honey in this thing, so it's all malt, which we'll talk about in here in a second why this might be different. Color-wise it's different too, because of that. But crisp, refreshing. I mean, it's I can see why they sell a lot of it. So let's switch over to the version that had some honey in it. Again, clone recipe with honey. Let's see what we got. So one on first note, my water profile is very different than theirs. They have a different water profile. I did nothing to adjust my water profile. So no salts, no anything else like that. I know that's something I need to start looking into. Second of all, uh, th that affects the flavor, of course. And then second of all, the honey there has actually maybe dried this beer out a little more than what this has. The This one probably has more uh, final gravity because it, I mean, used all malt and some of that's non-fermentable the honey was all fermentable. So this final gravity, I'll put up the starting and final there, but I think it's like 1038 or something starting. And we ended at like 1004 or something like that. Water profile is different. The body's a little thinner. I'd say the lack of malt actually um, made it a little bit thinner because it's a four percenter. Carbonation helps, but the, the extra malt there would actually really help to build up the body. But I mean, the, the honey character is there. It's really light and kind of it's a layer on top. It's a whisper of, of honey there, but it's not like, oh my gosh, that's honey. Like, holy cow, I taste the honey in this thing. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a second as well. I mean, I say that it's like in the end, like when you, you exhale, you get some of that honey floral side, which is interesting. This obviously doesn't have that. It's not intended to have that. Do I think this is a viable recipe? I think so with some water, chemistry changes, I believe that this could be better. I would maybe tweak the uh, amount of malt because really we hit like 40% or something like that sugars from honey and then 60% was from the actual uh, grains and malts. So it's not hitting the 50, 51% braggot status, but the honey is still apparent. So I'm gonna call this a braggot. I would probably honestly just up both ratios, not really make this a four percenter. Like I know that Bud Light's supposed to be, what is this supposed to be? Are you allowed to not put your percentage on the side? 4.2, this is 4.2%. 4 so, uh, I mean, I, it's tough. Maybe some beer experts below could uh, look at my recipe, look at the recipe, how I tweaked it, how we messed with it, and then tell me what you think. What would you do different? Obviously, I'm not the experienced brew beer brewer here. So, I wanna jump to a tasting done with the guys over at the Learn to Brew shop. They're gonna kind of send us out with their uh, version of this tasting and what they got from it. 
they did know what it was. I kind of told them what was happening there. So I hope you enjoy this and uh, go support Learn to Brew. A little well, malty on the smells, aroma. Uh -huh. Smells good. I thought I needed a Bud Light in the other hand. Well, dilly dilly. I forgot to bring that. Dilly up. dilly. dilly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's really got almost as much flavor as Bud Light. It's mm -hmm. so minimal on the flavor. There's like a little bit of floral. Mm -hmm. No, it's, for, it's good. Yeah. Very good. I get, <clears throat> I get that floralness. I get a little bit, it's airy, mm -hmm. which is, it's, it's super, yeah, I get that. There's not much to it. There's really not <clears throat> much to it at all. Yeah. Very, <laughs> yeah. very minimal flavor. I'm trying to get the honey out of it. I don't get a lot of honey though yeah. from it, but. Honestly, no, I mean, it's just a tiny yeah. floral flavor yeah. in there. Good job though. That that tastes <laughs> as close as I've had to Bud what's, Light. What's the ABV? You yeah. know, fourish. Okay. In that realm. Well, that's yeah. a good drink of beer. It'd be a good drink in uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. beer. Brag it. Yeah. Interesting. Go down easy. <laughs> there is something. I don't know if that's the. There's a a weird flavor. Do you feel like you get a fermentation funk in it at all? Slightly. A lot, like I, I lagered it and. I'm still learning lagering, so sure. I don't know. It has something here. I can't quite pinpoint, but I was like yeah. saying, there's something to it. There's a there's a, a weird funk on the back end yeah. of it that I can't place. But I kind of get that from Ambev beers as well. Yeah. I, and it's it's not, it, I think it's something as I've grown in flavors that I've become to dislike mm. where when I used to drink it it was just part, right. of part of the beer now it's like ah there's I don't this doesn't have what I'm looking for right mm. it's very clean crisp very yes. clean Sweet. crisp very yeah. good well thank you guys for being part of the tasting no Cheers. appreciate it. here <laughs> <laughs>